Uh, it's going to be uh, brought to us by the pastor of New Heights Baptist Church up in Action Pack, Reedsville, North Carolina. <laughs> brother Terry Lawson, you come right on and preach for us, brother. <laughs> Take your time. Thank you, Mr. Michael, so much. Right. You got, a, you got a green light? I'll let you look and see. Now you do. All righty. Hey, man, thank you, Pastor. Honored to be here tonight. I enjoyed the music. And, uh, boy, I'll tell you, that little girl there, I uh, wish I could say I was little. When I was birthed, Billy Kelly was preaching a meeting. And our church, the week, and as the first preacher I heard, sing and preach. And I said, Brother Billy, you put a curse on me. He said, better that than something else, boy. <laughs> and uh, I said, Mama, after Christy and I got married, I brought her from Florida and uh, up here to North Carolina. And I said, Mama, everybody kept telling Christy, oh, yeah, we remember Terry when he was like this and like this. I said, was I that large when I was born, Mama? She said, that she didn't say Terry. She said Terry, in a North Carolina way. said, Terry, when we brought you home from the hospital, your pitcher weighed 30 pounds, amen. <laughs> I said, dear Lord, help me. My dad, when we was getting ready to go to the mission field, he used to say, he said, now listen, for Terry, we was at, my dad my mother got saved at White Plains and uh, riding the buses in 64, my older brother and sister. My dad got saved July the 11th of 1965. And um, he said, let's have more children. And then they had me, my rotten sister. But anyway, we won't go there on that part. But uh, I, I think about uh, a heritage and all the things of how God has blessed through the years. I'm just thankful I was reared in old time preaching. Amen. I miss the men of yesteryears and uh, how I, man, here in Mays, Brother Mays, oh my goodness me. Bobby Grubbs, have me remember Brother Bobby Grubbs, all those fellows. And uh, man, I'll tell you, I, I thank God for the heritage that I came up under and uh, and everything. Well, I was going to tell you this. My dad used to, when we was getting ready to go to the mission field was re out ready. He said, "Now, now, I, we prayed for twins uh, when we was expecting Terry, but God didn't give us twins. He gave us two and one. Amen." I said, "Daddy, you're going to cause me to have a complex." He said, "Oh my, you are a complex." But anyway, <laughs> Hallelujah, Pastor. Honored to be here tonight. For the privilege to preach, I am so very thankful. Some of you wonder and say, what happened to his foot? Like Brother Durrance, Dr. Bright used to say down at Friendship, he broke his foot one time. I said, what happened to you there in Jasper, Florida? He said, it's me, my wife, and my own stove wood. Amen. And uh, uh, doctor put a hole in my foot, tending to something else. And I've had a time since February with it. But God's been good. And uh, I thank God for his goodness and grace. Mention this, we have Dr. Joe Arthur in our church at New Heights next week. Monday and Tuesday night, invite you to come. And then be mindful of the Piedmont, for everyone, Piedmont Baptist Camp Meeting over here at Colfax. That'll be September the 4th, 5th, and 6th. I'll be leading the choir and the music there. And of course, we have good speakers, Brother Doug Raines and Tony Finney and Kenny Baldwin on Friday night and uh, doing a youth night, so you, you come and join with us. Take your Bible tonight and go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 2. In Jeremiah, chapter number 2, and uh, as the old preachers used to say, if you got a Schofield Bible, that's page 773. Old Dr. Paul Black used to get up, and he'd say, take your Bible and turn to whatever. Some of them old preachers used to do that, and I'm going to tell you, if you didn't have a Schofield Bible, you... <laughs> You might good luck finding where they was at, amen. Because they didn't tell you the book or chapter. And I, I appreciate the message tonight, Brother Roscoe Bowden. I appreciate you, brother. Thank God for you, all the years of ministry. It's good to see many people that we know. It's good to have my family here and uh, my wife and my four children. And uh, you pray for our family. 
those boys are mean just like their mama. Amen. But my daughter Hannah, sweet just like me, ain't you, baby girl? But we won't go there. I got a look when I said that from over in that corner. And so I'm going to face this way, Dr. Bryant. Amen. Jeremiah chapter number 2. And I'm going to give you what God has uh, laid upon my heart for this evening. In verses 1, 2, and 3, he said, Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, and the kindness of thy youth, and the love of thine espousals, when thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in the land that was not sown. The Israel was holiness unto the Lord, and the first fruit of his increase. All that devoured him shall offend. Evil shall come upon them, saith the Lord. I want to speak to you a little bit on this. What does God have to say? Jeremiah was a prophet in a, a time and era of Israel that is much like our day. The people had forsaken God. They had turned their back on the holy God of heaven. They had shunned him. They did not follow after him. They had forsaken him and followed their own desires and their own lust of the flesh. Doesn't that sound like the world that we're in today? Hey, or do we find Jeremiah. What is he? He's in the early years of his ministry. We see that setting. He's been called of God. He's a prophet of God to the people. And God has sent him to sound, be like a, a trumpet, as Isaiah said, and lift up your voice like a trumpet and sound forth the truth. Men, that's what we that have been called of God need to be doing in this last day. We should not be disturbed by what we see. Uh, we should not be dismayed because the Word of God, this heavenly book right here, has already informed us And in 2 Timothy. He reminds us that in the last day, prayerless times shall come. We should not be dismayed by what we see. We know it's a difficult day. And the people have turned their hearts away from God. And so we, Jeremiah, what does he do? He comes and he begins to call out to them and sound the voice of the Lord, what he has received. He, he had been called of God. It had been 800 years since, they, uh, since Egypt and their entrance since they'd left and, and they entered into the promised land. There had been times, think about this, Israel had faced ups and they had faced downs. They had faced difficulty. They had faced hardship. But they also had experienced the good hand of God and the blessings of God. They had experienced those things during that time. There had been, been ups and downs spiritually. There had been times of revival and a moving of God in their midst and a renewal. But there had been times of rebellion and rejection of the God in heaven. They had turned their backs. They had walked away. And God said, listen, I want you to uh, go and tell them and speak to them and give them my word. I, I, as I look at this, however, there is a constant throughout all of this. What do I see? I see the love of God for his people. The love of God for. For his people. Oh, listen, he had not forsaken them. As the Lamentation says in chapter 3, he was fresh and new every morning. He was faithful to them. He had been faithful to them as he brought them out. He had provided the bread for them. He had provided meat for them. And when they were thirsty, they provi God provided for them for their thirst the water from the rock. God had blessed them. Oh, but notice the Lord has a word. It comes to Jeremiah saying, go and cry. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. You need to sound forth 
the word that I've given to you. And I see here, he said, thus saith the Lord. When I read those four words in the Old Testament, I'm reminded as a man of God, as a preacher of the gospel, I have a responsibility. I must give not my opinion. A lot of times when I'm preaching, I'll say, this is teriology. It's not bibliology. And I'm nothing, that's my opinion. It's not what God says. But notice Jeremiah, uh, he had received the word for God and he said, I have something to say. Now what do we see here in this passage of scripture? Why well, I, I, I see this. That there's a need for revival. There's a need for the people to be stirred toward the good things of God. There needs to be a turning toward God. And, and Jeremiah, what does he do? Oh, just as God tenderly pleaded with his people, Christ is pleading today just like he was in that day to the people of Israel. Oh, I'm thankful that there's a God of heaven and we are to give out what he says as we have received of it. Now, notice with me, this is God's evaluation and assessment of the people of Israel. This is God looking at them and saying, I know who you are. I know what you're doing. And I'm going to value, evaluate you and how you are walking and where you are at. So God begins to give his evaluation and assessment of who they are and what they have been doing. Now, Jeremiah, as I said, notice what he says here. The word of the Lord, he said, Thus saith the Lord, notice this. He said, I remember thee. I remember thee. This is God saying, hey, I know who you are. I haven't forsaken you. I haven't walked away, but I'm mindful of who you are. Oh, aren't you thankful that God's mindful of us? Oh, aren't you thankful that he remembers us in our low estate? Oh, he said, I remember thee. Now, I like to be remembered. I like for people to remember me. And my, I've had some say, Terry, we've met you, buddy, and we'll never forget you. Amen. And we like to be, it puts a smile on your face when somebody you may not recognize walks up and says, hey, I know you. I remember you. When you say, well, where and when? And they began to tell you. You stand there and go, wow, isn't that amazing? I've been thought, I, I'm, somebody remembers me. Oh, yeah. Now, I'll tell you, I don't have much difficulty uh, there's a lot of things I've forgotten through my lifetime, but I'll tell you there's a lot of things I haven't forgotten. And then you say, what are those? I, I'm, I'm like Billy Kelly said one time. He said, I forget all the important things. I can't remember nothing, but I never forget the places I eat. Amen. I never forget the, those good steakhouses. Amen. I was preaching the other day. I told him, I said, I'll tell you, I like to, I get, get caught up and I say, hey, I, I, I never forget where I get, get some good baked potatoes and potato salad and chicken and corn on the cob. Mm, I don't forget that. There's a, the good stuff I can't remember, amen. Did y'all hear about the fellow one time? Uh, he was finishing his cup of coffee one morning. He finished it and his wife, as he was finishing that cup of coffee, his wife walked into the kitchen and he was setting the cup in the sink and she said, honey, do you know, do you know what, Today is. He looked at him and said, I know what today is. And he said, bye. They said, bye. And he went outside and got in his truck and started down the road and got to work. But on the way to work, he got to pondering that when he got there. And he said, well, what, what is today? He said, I know. Oh, 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 it must be her birthday. And so he, he took and uh, he said, I know what I'll do. He picked his phone up off his desk and dialed the number, the local florist, and said, I had ordered a nice bouquet of flowers and had it delivered to the house tour. 
He said, that's what it was. It was her birthday. Well, come lunchtime, come lunchtime, he started to go on his lunch break, and uh, he said, oh, my goodness me, uh, was that her birthday or was it? Oh, surely it wasn't. Maybe it was our anniversary. And so what did he do? He said, well, I, I know what I'll do. There's a jewelry store down. He went and bought a nice diamond uh, bracelet for had it wrapped and delivered to the house. And he's, uh, he said, that's what it was. Well, he went back to work, his mind at ease, and about the time he was getting off, he said, I think I missed out on this thing. Maybe it wasn't her birthday. Maybe it wasn't her anniversary. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll stop on the way home. There's that little shop that sells those nice big boxes of chocolates, and I'll cover all my bases. So he stops, and he gets the box of chocolates, and uh, he, he comes to the house. He pulls in the driveway, gets out of his truck, starts up the sidewalk. The front door of the house burst open. And his wife come running out on the front porch, down the steps, down the sidewalk. And I mean, she ran up to him. She embraced him and she laid one on him and backed up and was holding his arm. And he handed her the box of chocolates and she looked in his face and said, Honey, this has been the best Groundhog Day ever. Amen. Oh, my. Sometimes you better remember, amen. God said, hey, listen, there's three things here I believe that he says I won't remember. Notice, first of all, tonight, he remembered their love. That he remembered their love. Now, you notice what he said here. He said, I remembered thee and the kindness of thy youth, the love of thy spousal. He said, I remember when I had first place in your life. I remember when I had priority in your life. Listen, I was your first love. You cared. You showed your affection. I've shown my love for you. I've expressed myself to you. But you used to be, listen, I was everything to you. But you have forsaken me. Oh, he said, thy love of thy espousal. Oh, listen, he remembered the zeal and the devotion that they had toward him. Uh, there had been time when Israel sought the Lord with all their heart, with everything that was within them. They sought after him. They loved him. They cherished him. But they had left their, what? First love. They had left their first love. It's kind of like the book of Revelation. When he said there, he said, I have somewhat against thee. I know thy works and you have left your first love. Oh, how sad. You remember when you first got married? You that are married here, do you remember when you first got married? The love that you had, that you experienced, that you did the little goo-goo eyes at one another. And you, man, you was overwhelmed with one another. And all through your life, I, I hope you've been like me. I, I love my wife more today than I did the day that I met her. I loved her then, but my love has grown. Let me give you another illustration. Do you remember when you first got saved? And you walked with God and you, you were there Sunday morning. People were there Sunday morning. I kind of blasted this Sunday. I said, listen, I'm like a preacher said of the week. Uh, your, listen, what your neighbor needs, your neighbor needs to see you getting in your car going to Sunday school, not just Sunday morning going to Sunday school and preaching, but they need to see you get in your car Sunday night. And they need to see you get in your car Wednesday night. And when revival's going on, they need to see you get in the car again, amen, and go down. Remember, there was nothing. Hey, listen, the, when, there were, it didn't make no difference what was going on at the house of God. You wanted to get in it. Hey, you, wanted to, you had a love for God in the house of God. You'd been redeemed. But we've gotten complacent in our day. Well, I said this, COVID, that has separated the sheeps and the goats. 
Well, I tell you, we know who loves God. I, they go to Walmart. To, I was visiting the other while back. Just as my son, my youngest son was with me. And I walked up and I said, ma'am, uh, some of them I told, I went to their house and sat in their living room. And they said, preacher, so good you come by. And they said, what are you doing? I said, I'm out visiting. I come to your house just to make sure that I was saved and in the boat. You said, why did you do that? And they kind of chuckled. I said, I haven't seen you in so long. I thought the rapture had taken place. <laughs> you say, where were they the next day? Sunday morning, they was in church, amen. I said, I'm glad to see the rapture didn't take place. But remember when we were devoted, our heart and our love was for God. God said, I remember. I remember. Not only was he moved by their love, but he was moved by their loyalty. Their loyalty. Notice in verse number 2, he said, The love of thy espousals when thou wentest after me in the wilderness in a land that was not sown. God remembered a time when Israel had followed him as they journeyed in the wilderness. See, he, he was their guide. He was their provision. Their loyalty was evident by the lives that they lived. God provided for them shoes that did not wear out. Garments that did not wear out. He took care of them every need. They weren't, they were not a warring people. And you know what God did? God said, I know you don't have the ability to fight. So God went out in front and God fought their battles for him. He said, You followed me with a blind faith, a childlike faith. Oh, well, where's our faith today? Where's our faith today? God hasn't changed. I said this to our church. I said, let me say this to you. Hey, the, the God of yesterday is the same God today. And he'll be the same God tomorrow. The same God that we had faith in. The same God we believed in back there. We can believe today. And we can trust in today. And we can trust in him tomorrow. Because he'll be the same tomorrow. You say what's coming down the pike tomorrow? I have no idea. But God will be still faithful. He will still be faithful. He'll still be true. You say, well, what if you need bread on your table? I guarantee you the same God that gave it over there and gave it yesterday and gave it today is the same God that will give it tomorrow. Amen. He's no different. God said, hey, I remember when you went after me. I think about Abraham. When God came to him and he said, I got a place I want you to go. He didn't say how many motels is on the way. How many, how many restaurants along the way. When will we get there? I've got to have a diagram and a map of the place I'm going. No, he turned and he said, let's pack the wagons. Catch the camels. Let's put the the donkeys around here. Get the sheep. We're going to follow God. Where are we going? I have no idea. But we're following God. Amen. Amen. There's a dependence. God said when you did, hey listen, when the land wasn't even sown, I listen, I took care of you. I remember your faith. Your loyalty. Oh, there was nothing burdensome about the service unto the Lord. And Exodus 24, 7 said, And he took the book of the covenant, and he read in the audience of the people, and they said, All that the Lord hath said we will do and be obedient and follow him, for he is a faithful God. He's a faithful God. He was moved in his evaluation. He said this, now this is God speaking to them, let me tell you about yourself. Sometimes we think we know, you say, well the grammar's not, you just hang on. I know that. If we think we know more about ourselves and me than anybody. But remember, God knows our downsittings, our uprisings. He knows the very thoughts and intents of our heart. 
and who we are. And God said, hey, I remember how you were devoted to me. I remember how faithful you were and loyal in faithfulness and walking after me. But then notice this. God said this. He said, I remember your love. I remember your loyalty. But I remember your light. Your light. Notice what he said in verse 3. Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruit of his increase. Israel is holiness. They were, you say, well, how do you get light? They were a testimony of a great God, the great God Jehovah in heaven. They lived, they walked their lives. Listen, they had separated themselves unto God and they walked in, in the holiness of God. God had already told them, be ye holy for I'm holy. We're reminded that by Peter as he reiterates it. He said, be ye holy for I'm holy. Let me say to you, people, they, people were watching Israel the Canaanites, Jebusites, Amorites, they were all looking, the Malachites, they were all watching Israel. And when they came to Jordan in Joshua 2, what did, what did Rahab say? Rahab said, hey, we have heard of you and we have heard of your God. And that's what she says, I've heard of him. And then she said this, He's the God. He is the God. He's the God in heaven. He's the God in earth. They were a witness to the magnificence and majesty of the God of heaven. Oh, listen. There was a day when Israel stood tall among other nations. They were tall among... They, uh, Israel was recognized as the people of God. On many occasions, the en enemy proclaimed the divine presence of God among the, his people. And Israel had been gr a great light in a dark world. We cannot live in the past, but it ought to challenge us to, to regain what we've lost. We must ensure that our light shines brightly in this world. What do you say in the book of Matthew? Let your light so shine. He said this, ye are the salt of the world. You're a light of the world. John was asked, are you that light? He said, no, I'm just a reflection of that light. He said, behold, right there's the light. There's the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. You say, how in Important is light. Light's a very important thing. I leave you with an illustration with this. My dad, we used to raccoon hunt, had dogs and everything and hunt. And when we didn't, we lived up here in Surrey County, we didn't have a lot of money and we didn't have those fancy lights back in the day and battery packs. We didn't have that. All we had was a lantern. All we had was a lantern. My dad, he said, let's, let's get the lantern and get it. We're going hunting tonight. And uh, he said, let's get it all around. And he would take that old lantern and he would raise the globe up or raise the chimney up on it and swing that globe out and take it. He'd be dirty and black and he'd wash it out and clean it up and he'd roll the wick up and trim it. These young kids are like, what in the world is he talking about? <laughs> and he'd trim it and he'd get it all ready. And he'd roll it back down. And he'd fill it up with oil, had it ready. But when he finished washing that globe, he would dry the outside off and he would take salt and he would hold that globe up that was had the moisture inside. It wasn't real wet, but it was damp. And he would take and he would flick those large elements of salt. It wasn't just real fine, but it was salt. And he would flick it inside that globe. And then he would take and set it down on the table. And he said, 
we're ready to go hunting tonight, boy. I said, really? I said, Dad, what's that? He said, you'll learn tonight. Well, he would go out there and he'd pick that globe up. He'd take and slip it back in, raise the chimney, set that in. And he said, now, when we get over there, I'll show you what that purpose is. And he'd take, we got over there ready to hunt and go into the woods. And he would, he would raise that up, raise that wick enough and light that, let, let the uh, chimney and all slide back down over that and he'd adjust the light and we would start down through the woods. A lamp doesn't give out a lot of light. You see a little bit in front. But I was amazed. I said, he said, I said, Dad, what was the salt about? And he said, I got to notice him. There was bright beams of light. And the light from that wick, from that lantern, would hit those pieces of salt and it would send out a sharp prism right out into the darkness. I said, Daddy, how'd you know about that? He said, your grandpa showed me that when I was a boy. And I, and I, I, I thought about that when, uh, look at that scripture, you are the light. We need to be a light in a dark world. And I close with this little aspect. There you find in verse number 9, God said, I'm going to plead with you children. Verse 13, he talks about, he said, I have two things. You've committed two evils. You've walked away from the fountains of living water. And you've, you've got cisterns. You, you've built them that have no water. You know what we're trying to do? What is he saying? We're trying to do it on ourselves. What we need to do is be an Isaac. We need to dig off those wells. What we need to do is get back to the fountain Oh, God said, hey, I'm a God of mercy. In Psalm 136, he said, the Lord's good and he's mighty. Hey, for his mercy endureth forever. We've experienced the good hand of God. What we need to do is get back to the fountain and get a good drink of water, amen, and be stirred for the cause of Christ. In this dark world, let's be a light. Let the world see our love. Let the, let the world see our faithfulness, our loyalty to our God. And let the world see the difference in our life and live that God can be reflected in our lives. Pastor, Father, tonight we come to you. I thank you for your word. Thank you for what you've given to us. God, I thank you for the service, for every song and the other message as well. Oh, my Lord. Help us to remember who you are and help us to get where we can get help. God, Lord, help us to get to the fountain and drink of that fountain and our lives be renewed by the grace of God. In Christ's name we pray. Amen, Pastor.